the renowned restaurant owner of the land of Kush, Mr. Gregory Brown, who is here to give a demonstration on vegan food. So please give us your attention and come sample the vegan foods if you have never tried them before. If you enjoy vegan foods, we have a treat for you. So pay attention and I now in introduce you to Mr. Gregory Brown. Woo! Woo! Yeah! How y'all feeling in there? That's what's up. Big energy, big energy. All right, so we're gonna make this happen. I'm gonna cook some uh let me adjust this mic a little bit. You said vegan crab case. Who said that? Who said that? Oh, you can tell them all. Okay. okay, I got a witness in the house. All right, so we're gonna do a quick little stew. We're gonna make some basmati rice, and um, we're gonna have a good time. Come on, pull up a chair. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty of room out here. You know, push people out the way if you have to. Get physical. That's right. Get physical. All right. Let me see if I can figure out what I'm doing. Don't start none. It won't be none. Because uh, okay. All right, so. I'm gonna start off with a little oil in a pan. I like sesame oil. Okay, show me a picture of your husband. I might know. Probably, probably go way back like car seats and black crayons or something like that. Oh, that's sesame oil, dark sesame oil, by the way. Ah, who else likes sesame oil? Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I love dark sesame oil. All right, so I'm throwing some fresh garlic in here. I'm just smashing this up real quick. There we go. There we go. I'm getting it heated real quick. I'm also going to do some rice. Um, I'm going to season some basmati rice and throw that around a little bit. So let me get that started. I'm going to make that real simple, real easy. It's not like my daughter running around here. That's okay? Okay, well, that's right. That's right. And feel free to ask me questions about freestyle this recipe. I'm making this up as I go along, okay? So, okay. Um, so for me, when I cook, I like to season stuff as I go along. So I like my oil to be seasoned. Um, so I'm throwing a little curry powder in here. I'm going to do, I love this thing because it just gets hot really quick. I'm going to throw a little cumin in here. It's always good to use spices and herbs in your cooking. Don't just limit yourself to salt and pepper. Uh, I'm going to throw some coriander in here. Dang, that smells good already. Now, the reason I'm using the turmeric, I mean the curry, is because I wanted some turmeric in here. Turmeric is good for anti-inflammatory, so if your joints are hurting. Woo! That's right. That's right. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. I feel. All right. Come on, move this around a little bit. Y'all can smell that. That, that smells good. All right. That's the base. This is going to be the base for what we do. So I'm throwing some onions in here that I already cut up, obviously. What's the kind of kind of onions for people that don't like onions? Make it, your breath smell fresh. <laughs> um. Onions are good for your blood. They help clear out toxins out of your blood. So that's why we traditionally have always cooked with onions. I want salt and pepper. Yeah. We love onions. Yeah, uh, there are other people out. I know there are other people out here who don't like onions. I'm not mentioning <laughs> any names. Okay. Marie Johnson says nice and keep watching live. I'm keep watching live. Bang. Who's watching live? Somebody else? Okay, I don't know for truth. Okay, so I threw a little salt and pepper in here. Y'all can see what this kind of looks like. Okay. I like to base it with the seeds. So now, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of this exotic fruit, um, but it's called a tomato. Okay, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of it before, but it's a tomato. Some people eat tomatoes raw. Are y'all country folk? Look. Country folk, man. I saw a little, I saw a little girl eat with um tomato. I don't know how y'all do it. Like I just never. What? A potato? Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, tomato sandwich. I'm talking about biting into it like an apple. Oh my god. That's oh that, that's a Baltimore thing. Okay. Ma, you never taught me that. The country folk. There we go. <laughs> I know that's right. So I'm just throwing a little tomato in here. I'm gonna throw uh I'm throwing some pumpkin in here. Now, okay. Okay. Oh wow, you're gonna like this pumpkin. Oh man. I got you. The pumpkin is so good for you. The pumpkin, especially this time of year, I mean, number one, pumpkin is warming to the body, right? So foods have different temperatures. Like beans are neutral, pumpkin is warming to the body. Um, and being that we're going into the fall, I know it doesn't feel like it right now, but look at this. This guy can cook, man. Um, so the pumpkin is warming to the body. So when you get into the fall months, this is when you want to start heating up the inside of your body. So when you get to the winter months, your body doesn't get as cold as quick and you stay a little healthier or a little warmer. You want to warm the inside of your body. So this is a great time to really do your nuts and seeds as well because they are warming to the body. I love pumpkin. And this, this pumpkin in particular, this is a kombucha pumpkin. Um, but you can use any pumpkin. You can use butternut squash. You can use acorn squash. Any of the any any of the winter squashes, winter squashes, pumpkins. They all kind of sit in the same family. So um, very good for you. Very good for your digestive system. So if you need to, you know, detox and clean out a little bit, um, putting this in a stew is really good for you, and it will help with that process. It look like cantaloupe, but I can tell you. It doesn't taste like cantaloupe, no, no, okay? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a tomato. I got to see the pumpkin straight out of the garden. Cantaloupe is excellent for you. If you have uh, diabetic issues, cantaloupe, cantaloupe is really good for you. Um, a lot of times with diabetes, it's attacking the spleen. Your spleen and your pancreas are not functioning properly. So, I gotta hold the right to um, So, um, cantaloupe, watermelon, any of those melons are really good for your spleen. It can help with your diabetic issues. So, um, cantaloupe, excellent for you. I know, I know. Um, who else are I Okay. That's right. Y'all see how that look at that. Look at that, Mom. Okay. You smell it? Yeah. Okay, all right. I know. So I'm throwing about oh that's nice. I like that. This is the best bike, man. You can do my rap concert right now. Um so I'm throwing about a cup of lentils in here, green lentils. Now you have all kinds of lentils. You got red lentils, you got black lentils, you got brown lentils. You got green lentils, whichever your flavor is. Um, I like lentils, uh, mainly lentils and split peas, mainly because they cook so quickly. It doesn't take a lot. Look at you. Oh, I wasn't paying you attention. I'm sorry. I talk to my food. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do that. But um, lentils, split peas, they're really quick to cook. So a lot of times people don't want to cook beans or dry beans because um, you got to soak them overnight. They take, when I'm in a pinch, this is what I go to. I go to my lentils and my split peas because they take no time at all. They cook really quick and really nutritious and delicious. So I'm throwing a little water in here. Um, I generally, with my grains and my beans, I generally do three cups of liquid to one cup of beans or grains. So that was about two cups of water, but now I gotta throw my secret ingredient in here. Mm. Mm. It's not. Mm. It's coconut milk. Coconut milk. Wow. A little twenty, twenty, twenty. Okay. Oh, uh, a little bit of coconut milk. We're gonna throw maybe about a half a cup, a cup. I don't know. I estimate. You know, I just play around. I don't always measure everything. So we're going to bring this 
to a nice little boil here. And we're just going to let this cook. And then I got this rice cooking over here. I got some basmati rice cooking over here. So we're going to play with that. I'm going to throw a little, uh, this is called garam masala. So this is uh, actually a spice blend um, of different seasonings. So it has like cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, cumin. They use this a lot in Indian cooking. Yes, sir. It's basmati rice. Yeah, it's a, it's a really fragrant rice. You know, you got all kinds of rice. You got black rice, which they call coincidentally king rice, right? So you got ba you got basmati, you got the king rice, you got red rice. You find that in a lot of um, uh, Mexican dishes, Latino dishes. Um, they use a lot of red rice. You got brown rice. You got short grain, long grain, medium grain. So it's whatever your flavor is. Like if you are familiar with sushi, sushi uses a short grain rice which is a lot stickier. Um, so if you like that, you know, like more of that uh, starchy feeling to your rice, like the, uh, the short grain rice. But if you like it a little bit looser than the long grain rice, you'll probably like it a little bit better. I like to play with all of them, so whatever my flavor is. So I'm throwing some of this garam masala in here and so we can wrap a taste. Huh? Yeah, you should. I mean, Giant, Safeway. I'm not sure about save a lot. I mean, you probably can. Like, I've seen them in a lot of different stores. Like, I'm always in all kind of different markets. So, yeah, absolutely. Bang. So, I'm throwing a little bit of that in there. That's going to give it a little color and flavor and a little salt and pepper. That's it. That's all I'm doing to this. This is uh, sea salt. Now, normally, what I do with my rice because I cook all the time, and this is for people who got busy lives, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know y'all be busy because y'all got break dancing competitions. So yeah, right. I, I, I know. I already know. You don't got to say that. I seen y'all. I see y'all out there popping a lot and everything. So, um, um, so what I like to do with my grains, any grain, any rice, any quinoa, anything like that. I like to take maybe like a cup, cook it just plain. So whenever I'm ready to cook, all I got to do is stir fry some vegetables um, and then put them with the, and then the rice is already sitting in the refrigerator. I could just pop it out, bang, go over some vegetables, salt, pepper, whatever spices or herbs I want to use for them. So that makes it really easy to cook. Um, I generally, I usually have a container like this with chopped onions, like maybe twice a week. I cut up onions put it in this container, and then I'm ready to go. Um, okay, I didn't peel this garlic. Okay, I can tell you that officially. I did not peel this, but you can buy peeled garlic, or if you want to peel the garlic yourself, you can do that, and just have it in a container. So that's one less thing, or a couple of less things that you have to do when you actually cook. Um, so that just makes it a lot easier. So I'm all about meal prep, um, being prepared. Like, I'll cook a dish like this, I mean, this is me, my wife, and my daughter. So I'll cook a dish like this, pop this joint in the refrigerator, or I'll cook it for my daughter's lunch. Whatever's left over, I'll pop it in the refrigerator. So, you know, I got something to eat later on in the week. Mix it with some of these, um, some of this rice. I just it smells smell good, too. Does it? Yeah, it smells good. Okay. I feel like it needs a little more. Um, but yeah, so I like to be prepared. So I generally have vegetables cut up. I like to cook with color. So a lot of things have color for me. So um, that's why I use the squash, not only for the health benefits, but I play around with all the colors, the greens, the yellows, the oranges, the blues, whatever it is, I like to play with those colors um, in your vegetables. So, all right, throw some questions out. I'm not Laura, gonna let this Laura cook. says, uh, the question, what? What rice do you like for the viewers? Uh, More responded, brown basmati or short grain rice? Mm, short grain. Uh, uh, I like the. Uh, I don't know. I like the. I like the long grain brown. That's what I really like. I like long grain brown rice. The basmati rice, my daughter likes. I don't know why. Maybe because it's the flavor. Like when you smell the rice, it doesn't smell like regular rice. It doesn't smell like anything. But the basmati rice, when you take it out of the package, it smells like something. Like, it's got a fragrance to it. Yeah. So I think that's why she likes that rice. But in general, she's going to cook. She's going to eat whatever I cook for. So I spend time cooking for her every day. 
you know, and I, I take time. I cook two, at least two, okay, not dishes, but meals. Like, so I might cook three things for our lunch. It'll be some sort of grain and vegetable, some sort of bean dish, and then some sort of cow, some sort of greens. I like the kale right now. I play with the kale, but I do collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens, beet greens, whatever green it is. Beet, beet greens. They real like a spinach. Oh, like yeah, because they real soft. Like if you ever seen like Swiss chard or spinach, right? You know how I cook down real it's real soft. Like the collard greens and the kale, it's a little tougher, right? So it takes a little bit more time for it to cook. So um, but yeah, like the beet greens, like you can dice those. Like I'll generally cut those up with some onion, garlic, some peppers. I might throw some mushrooms in it, some celery, and just throw a little bit of water or vegetable broth in the bottom of the pan and just let that steam and cook. Yeah, you know, and just let that cook and it cooks real quick. Yes, sir. Sir, I can't tell you all my Yes, I put hot peppers. I like hot peppers. Okay, my wife, I, um, right now, like habanero, um, uh, scotch bonnet. I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but scotch bonnet peppers. I tend to like, um, I like habanero and scotch bonnet. They like right around the same thing. Okay, uh, sir, you trying to hurt my heart or something like that, sir? No, I don't. I don't do the Carolina because I'm not cooking for just me. I like spicy food, but my wife doesn't like spicy food. My daughter, eh, sometimes, sometimes not, right? So I don't do a lot of spicy for them, like. But I'll do spicy for me, so I got to temper what I cook. What else? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, more like a bean, more like a bean. I mean, it's just whatever you season it with, though, you know, because you want, I mean, it's going to taste like whatever, like this will be more like a curry situation, you know, because I threw the curry powder in there, which I'm going to re-season it in a minute. Um, I'm going to re-season it because I like the flavor throughout. So I season the bottom of the pan and the oil just to give it a base. And then I'm going to come back in a couple minutes and I'm going to re-season this. So it's going to taste more like the seasoning than like a bean. You know, go ahead. Right. So like, so say like a kidney bean or the black beans, they take a little bit longer. They're a little bit tougher. These don't take as long to cook. And what I tend to find is that the smaller beans are higher in protein. So like the lentils, split peas, like all of those probably have about 13 grams of protein per serving, whereas your kidney bean, llama beans, those bigger beans, they tend to have about six, maybe six or seven grams of protein. So if you if you like, okay, well, I don't know how I'm going to get my protein, then like I always go. That's why I always like the lentils. They, they don't take that long. I'm a little bit of a lazy cook. Like, I don't like to spend a whole lot of time in the kitchen, even though, like, to my wife, my wife's like, oh, you spend two hours in the kitchen, and then you cook them. I'm like, no, nah, I spend, like, an hour in the kitchen. But, but again, I pre-prep stuff. Like, I already have onion and garlic prep. I, I don't mind cutting vegetables as I go along, but, look, having a little pumpkin, a little carrots already diced up in a container, you, you give yourself 30 minutes twice a week, and you already had vegetables prepped, and all you got to do is add a little oil, stir fry, bang, bada bing, bada boom. You know what I'm saying? You can make it happen. Look at you. You just acted, aren't you? I shouldn't even turn up the heat on you, should I? I talk to my food too. I'm sorry. I am scared. I talk to my food. I talk to my food like I talk to my plants. You understand? I'm not. I don't have time running a restaurant, so I, I don't even have, I don't have a space. And I don't have a time. Are you, do you garden? Yeah, he's a gardener. Oh, he's a gardener? Yeah. What do you grow in your garden, sir? Everything. You grow okra? Okay, okay, okay. It sounds like you got a big garden. That's what? Okay, seven. I don't know that one. Seven gardens, okay. See, I know about white lot. I know about the blues. I know a couple of different. Nah, you gotta tell me about that one. Okay. Oh, look at that! You were sneaking up on me. 
But that rice almost done. Okay, is the rice done? Oh, look. look at that. Look at that. Daddy did it. Daddy did something right here. Oh, oh my God. Now, go find Anna and tell her I need some force. Dang, look at that. I just want to test this rice out. Half a second. Look at that. That rice cooks so quick. That's enough. I mean, the food doesn't take that long to cook. So, okay, so I'm a vegan. Okay, I'm going to talk about Landon Kush in a minute. But I'm a vegan. I've been vegan for a long time. Uh, vegan, no animal products. So no fish, no turkey, no chicken, no hamburger, no dairy, no eggs, no uh, cow's milk. I do almond milk, oat milk, black right, seed milk. Right. I do all of that stuff. So that's uh, being vegan. And I own a vegan restaurant. My daughter, my daughter and my wife is vegan. So my daughter knows Tom Land of Kush. The Land of Kush. Vegan Soul Bistro right there on 840 North Utah Street. That's where we're located. We've been there for about 10 years. Yeah, we're getting that. I know you come on. Oh, you're a gangster man? Okay. Okay, okay, that's okay. I like that guy. That's my guy right there. That's definitely my guy. I've never been there. I mean, I've had his food. He got a spot up in Philly. I mean, that's where he started from. I don't even know. Okay, I'm getting ready to reseason this one. I just want to test this rice out real quick. So I'm re-seasoning this with the same seasons I used before. I'm throwing a little cumin in here just because I want it to pop a little bit more. I mean, I tell people season food to your taste, to your taste buds. It's all about you when you cook. Me, it's all about me when I'm cooking. I don't ignore my wife, but it's all about me when I'm cooking. Yeah, see, that's my that's my wife too. She's not spicy. I mean, what is it? Chef what? Oh, saffron. Yeah, I love saffron. I throw it in the rice. Saffron is like these little strands, and they add flavor to the rice. But the saffron is bad expensive. Yeah, very, very expensive. It does. But you don't need a lot of it, though. Uh, you definitely don't need a lot. A little curry in here. This joint is almost done. You can ask me any question you want. Sure. Because the body adjusts as we get older. The body changes. Our internals change. You know what I'm saying? So um whatever it is, your your body the body changes as you as you as you grow older. So some things that, that you could eat when you were younger, you may not be able to eat. Your, your body may not be able to tolerate it. And then depending on what else you're eating, that may that may trigger that spice. You may be allergic to it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe too much heat in your body, especially as we get older. Uh, we tend to get hot a lot faster. When you're young, you just flow. You know, everything. You you burning more energy. So when you have that excess heat, sometimes excess heat can lead to inflammation in the body. You know what I'm saying? And not and not just we always think inflammation in terms of joints, but also in terms of your organs. So also. Your, your, your kidneys, your uh, your spleen, your pancreas, your intestines become inflamed, and when that happens, you might get irritation. And so your body, your body will let you know. Your body's telling you, nah. You start yeah. <laughs> right. So your body, your body, but your body is just going through a change. Your body is just said like, look. No box, like I don't want to do that anymore. So you always gotta be um I mean, but you don't gotta do it, you don't gotta do it hard and, and you may want to do it like as it gets colder. When it gets cooler outside, that's when your body wants that 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 additional heat internally. 
to help you get warm. So, like, if you do it in the fall and gradually do it, when you get to the winter months, the body's just not as cold. You know what I'm saying? Or the cold air is slower to react to your body because you heat it up internally. What we always talk about is uh, training uh, and and teaching yourself internally to the external. Most people train or they look at the external first as opposed to internal. It's just we had a church, right? So we talk. So the talk is you train yourself spiritually first, then you train yourself in the other things. So you grow internally. <laughs> hey, anytime. Yeah, that's what you gotta do. You gotta train yourself internally. So you train yourself spiritually first. And and to train yourself spiritually is building your personal relationship with God. You know what I'm saying? It's not just going to church and fellowship. All that stuff is great. But at the same time, you have to um you gotta have your personal relationship with God. That's right. That's right. That's right. Always pay attention. Um but you gotta, you know what I'm saying? Like when you have your personal relationship with God, like everything, and that that's what makes the Bible clearer for you. You know, it's it's your specific God, and that tells you, you know, God's gonna tell you what you need to do, you know, where you need to work, how long you need to be working there. So, you know, build from the inside out. I mean, that's how I got to this point. A church elder came to me and was like, she said, write down your questions for God, listen for the answers, and write down the answers. And then the process of doing that, that's how I came up with the concept of the land of Kush. That's how I came up with the idea. And so like that began my personal relationship with God. And so then even when I met my wife, I looked at my wife and I was like, oh, she's beautiful. I want to go holler at her. You know what I'm saying? But then God God spoke to me and was like, don't talk to her. Just say hi and bye. Because I came to the job to get my money up so I could open the restaurant. So God was like, stay focused. And then one day she came, like five months later, she came into my cubicle, sat down and asked me out for my birthday. That's right. She stalked me. That's how it goes down for the world. You know what I'm saying? That's how it goes down. Don't, you don't, you don't got, that's right. You don't got to talk to her. She don't need to tell her side of the story. She don't need to. This is my side. Just listen to me. So when she came to my cubicle, you know, I had to ask God again because God got me the job at Verizon Wireless. Like I was. I had the same time. Right. So um, <laughs> Yeah, that's probably true as well. Um so you know when it was time like I spoke to God and was like, yo, can I you know can I talk to her now? And God was like, Yeah. So that's when we started dating, you know what I'm saying? So everything you know, I'm not saying every, every everything gay yeah, just work just kind of come together. You know, when you do that, because it makes everything clearer. It makes you, re, you know, your reactions or who you hang out with, when, where you hang out, if you do hang out. All of that makes a difference in your life. You know what I'm saying? And when you have that relationship with God, like that, all makes a huge difference. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, okay, I got the kids over here. I know my daughter wants some. I want to taste this in a second. See, it looked good. See, and I wish I should have bought some cilantro out here. Anybody watching live have any That's questions? Yeah. Have any questions? Throw some other questions at me. Yeah, come on, bro. You sure? Okay. You vegan? No. Nah. Oh, yeah? Okay. All right. That's what's up. Good man. Okay. Okay. Yeah, my man. Hey, that's how it is, right? I have the I see. Yeah. 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 We try to do as much fresh as we can. So we're going to be opening another restaurant in about a year and a half. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. Say something. Uh, so. Listen, it happens sometimes. Like I run out of stuff. Like either or, you know what happened with the with the sweet potatoes? It's like at first. Then it's the pandemic. Y'all gotta understand. There is an issue. There is definitely an issue with inventory because of the pandemic. Y'all gotta appreciate the store is open, 
<laughs> it's not even, inventory. you know, it's not, it's not even that. Like at first when we opened, it was like uh, the sweet potatoes ain't really sell in the summertime. But then all of a sudden something happened and then the sweet potatoes started selling year round. Like I'm mean, just off the chains and we do it fresh. We don't do canned, we don't do canned sweet no. potatoes. We, you know, my guys are in there and the young ladies, they thank kill. You, thank you for saying that. No, what, the young ladies? No, no, oh, okay. that some people think it's canned food. It's uh -huh. not, say it live, it's not canned food. Right. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. It's his fault. That's his fault. Um, so, so we do everything fresh. We peel up. They peel sweet potatoes. They in there working in the kitchen. So, you know, it's almost, almost fresh. Right. Does, does it look good? Does it smell good? Okay. Okay. Show the viewers. Okay. Okay. You want me to show the viewers? We live. We live and direct right now. So. This is what my wife does. I should have bought an oven. This one is hot. You gotta bring the camera with me. I want, yeah, I do. You know what I'm saying? When the pandemic, once the pandemic hit, um, you know, we there wasn't this going on. So, we, uh, okay. Can I show? Okay. I'm going to take my jacket off. I mean, we go to schools. Um, I did four ninth grade classes. We were going to um, one school. We um, we were teaching the kids how to make salads. So I mean we do that. So you know, you know some points. People will pay money. It's like it's like a couple with like cooking class. And like you get a space. People will pay you money. They'll come and y'all cook us together. You know, okay. you know I mean like this is thing. So I can talk trash to my wife while I cook and make money at the same time. Okay, mom. Okay. Yes, we are open now. What'd open you say, mom? Go ahead, mom. What'd you say? Don't talk trash to my wife. No, That's what Oh, man, I'm done. I would love to do that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to get to that. Like, because we can really renovate the space that we're in, and then we can really open a second restaurant over in East Baltimore. So we're tearing down two buildings. And building it back up from scratch, so it's going to be 80 seats. Whereas the spot, you know, the spot we got now is only like 23 seats. So it's going to be 80 seats. So it's going to be a pretty big restaurant, or, or a lot bigger than what we have. So like, but that's where my mind is right now. It's like this whole like rebranding, getting this this new spot done. We just filed the building permit. So you know, Harbor Bank has been really Harbor Bank really is the one that got us set up with this new location. So. Um, shout out to Harbor Bank. I just want this to cook a little bit longer. It's not good. Huh? It looked good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wish I had some fresh herbs. Nobody got no cilantro around here? No? Okay. All right. I thought we had a farmer. Throw some other questions out at me while, while I let this cook. Uh, I've been there for 10 years. Uh, my daughter was born over top of the restaurant. This is the hand I caught it in. Okay. That's right. Whole bird. Did it. She did it. Well, I was just there assisting, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I ain't gonna tell you what she told me. She wanted me to hold up a mirror so she could see. It. She wanted to do the double mirror action so she could see. It. What? No, I was like, I'm not holding up a mirror while I try. Like, you want me to be like this while I try and catch my daughter coming out, right? Holding up a mirror, one hand like this. No, that was like. <laughs> The stuff women put us through, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all just be trying to get us to do everything. That's what we What happened? What you say? Um, let me see. What else? You had um, superstars come through our restaurant. Stevie Wonder, Chili from TLC, Angela. Um, I'm gonna say, huh? Angela Davis. Yeah, I was gonna say Angela Bassett. I wish Angela Bassett would come But Angela Davis came through a couple of times. I was terrified. Yeah, I was terrified. I didn't even ask her. I didn't even ask her for a picture or nothing. And she came. I, I came in one day. She's sitting in the window. I went to ask my staff. I was like, y'all need to call me and tell me Angela Davis was here. And it was like, who? I, I said, oh my god. So I had to nah, they ain't here. You know what? It's all relevant, you know? It's all relevant, you know? So, because there, there are 
people who are famous, that's more relevant to them, you know, so that they will probably know. So I had to pull up the phone, and it was like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 she did look familiar. I was like, okay, you know. But they're, they're like, the, the, the young ladies that opened for uh, Beyonce, Chloe and Haley, like, they came through. So, I, yeah, I didn't know who they were. My, my uh, one of the young ladies that works for me, she um she took a picture. I had no idea who they were. But now now they they superstars, right? So okay, we almost there. Almost there. I just forgot to bring a lid for it. Mm. A couple of them. Little salt and pepper. Little salt and pepper. Bang. Uh -huh. I have no idea. I forgot that. That's what I'm looking for. A little salt. I don't use a lot of salt. I might use a little more pepper. Fia, this is my daughter. You can tell. What you doing? Get out of my rice. You lost one balloon. What happened to it? <laughs> That's what that's what she does at home. Like all you hear is like 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 <laughs> like like she put her hand she put her hand she don't put her hand right in the pot like she grabbing everything off the stove like like when like when I saw her eating some plain rice out of the pot I'm like this child eating like come on like she in the pot like or and, and like going back like she'll go sit down watch TV and go back to the pot. You know, I was like, all right, all right, I'm all right. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm good. That's the only one. Yeah, that's the only one. That is girl. <laughs> you heard that? But you see how she walked away from that one. Two or three, right. Definitely not three. <laughs> She likes being the only child. She has a cousin that got three sisters, and she's like, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> I get well, no, everything. I have, I have two only children. I have a 30, 30 year old son and a 23 year old daughter. Oh, wow. So they're two only children. They're they're the actual, like, yeah. 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 All my siblings are 17 years apart. Wow. So my, my, uh, my brother's 17 years younger than me. My sister's 34 years old. So I take my father out for his birthday. Right? I take my father out for his birthday. And my, and my, and my father said, he said, son, I got some news for you. I said, what, you pregnant? So he said, nah, uh, remember the young lady that lives across the street? And I was like, yeah, it's like, you got a sibling on the way. And she's going to be here in another two months. I was like, what? What? So yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I just want the pumpkin. That's really all I want. This is about jam, you know. I know everyone's ready. Oh, yeah, they're getting some utensils. What's the dish again? Uh, yeah, coconut curry lentils. Coconut curry lentils with uh, basmati rice. Some basmati rice. Yeah, there it is. See how that cooked now? Yeah, I think so. I think so. They're getting plates, y'all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just need one more. I need to taste it. What other questions do I ask? We are. That was the health department rolled out on y'all? Oh, they were supposed to come, right? Oh, y'all should have said something. I bought y'all a whole tray and stuff. What do you use on like the tofu and the soy soy products? So uh, I say you know um, balance is everything. I don't mind soy products, but I don't use them all the time. Like cats, 
Like there are some people who just they go vegan and they just go soy or they go for the pre the processed stuff, which is you know it's all good, but this is the food you should be eating. You know what I'm saying? Like you just can't overdo you can't overdo anything. So you don't want to do too much soy where that's the only that's all you eat every single day is soy. Like nah, you don't do that. You know you don't do the sitan like that. You don't overdo like even when we go to the doctors, we have a holistic doctor, and that doctor will say, okay, well. Okay, you got a lot of spinach in your diet. You know what I'm saying? You might want to switch up them greens, you know? Or he might say to me, like, oh, you know, you need to do more things with magnesium. Because a lot of times we look at protein, carbohydrates, and fats, right? We don't look at micronutrients like vitamins and minerals. And so it's like, oh, well, you might need more magnesium. So now I got to research, okay, what what vegetables, what, what sources of magnesium and potassium are out there? He'll say on potassium, you automatically think bananas. He's like, nah, don't do bananas. You look at something else. And so, you know, you gotta have variety in your diet. And that's why I talk to um like cooking by colors, because you get those different nutrients when you cook by and you eat by colors, you know, making sure you have the berries or eating seasonal. You know, you have foods that are cool to the body, like your cannibal, your pussy, your fruits, they're cool to the body. So that's good for the summertime, but in the wintertime. You want things that are more warm, and that's when you eat your two with like your potatoes, your um, your, uh, your your sweet potatoes, you know, things like that. And when your protein sources, that's why I go to the beans, you know. You like the purple sweet potatoes, yeah. I like those too. I mean, you know, I try to I mean I try to go get a little bit of everything. Oh, you do you go to the farmers market? Yeah, I try to get I try to get whatever, whatever's out there. And then season it, and I try to think season it. So go. I don't do a lot of soy. I mean, we serve some. Okay. 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 I try to do organic as much as possible, right? So a lot of times I'm in Whole Foods or Moms. I mean, obviously I, I own a restaurant, so it's easy to get produce in. Um, now, as far as like cost, I mean, the organic might be a little bit more expensive, but I try to do the organic. Sure. No. Yeah, and, and that's the oh yeah, that's the best thing is um the best thing is to eat it directly from the ground, from the earth. Like I would prefer to do that. You know what I'm saying? Because like I grew up I grew up in Baltimore City and so I wasn't I mean, I didn't know about all these fresh fruits and vegetables. Like I didn't know until you go to a farm and you pick something. Like I went to one farm and this guy picked a a, a sweet pepper, and I was like, I was like, oh man, that's that's like a, yeah, um, I was like, that's a whole different flavor than what you get in the market. Like like you say, you can't smell the vegetables. You know what I'm saying? And that all that stuff means a lot. Like I've tasted. You know, when you taste something and it's got flavor, like a, what I taste, like arugula. Like I heard about arugula, right? But then when I had arugula, I was like, oh, that's spicy. Oh, okay. And then, you know, when I had like a sorrel, uh, the, the leafy green sorrel, and I was like, oh, this tastes like a lemon. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I prefer food like fresh from the ground. Like you can't do that with the restaurant because there's so many, um, you know, this is this is a matter of volume. But um, when, yeah. So like, I like it as I like everything is um, I like everything as fresh as possible. Like when we make our lemonade, we fresh squeeze the lemonade. Okay. Um. 
So, like, and then when you have somebody else's lemonade and it's not fresh squeezed, like, yo, you know the difference. Like, you can see, you can, you can just tell the difference. How is it? Is that right? Okay. Don't try to get me, brother. Don't try to get me. Okay. Don't be upset. No, I know, I know, I know what you're upset about. Uh, them people. Them yeah. People. Yeah, a little onion and garlic. I like that. I like that. And I did I did curry. So I did, you know, the curry powder with the coconut milk. Yeah, coconut and pumpkin, like that coconut milk and pumpkin. Oh, oh you know, okay. Jamaican or Trini? They say Trini got the best food in the world. I got like this. Uh, somebody gave me like the official cookbook, like the girls' school or something like that. So like I've been trying to convert like West Indian stuff. Oh good, I can rap to you then. Yeah, I'm getting ready to do this oil down. So you know with the breadfruit, um, but I'm gonna use seitan instead of the meat with the coconut milk and the peppers. Like yeah, I'm, yeah, that's that's my thing, you know. But yeah, he always, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they use the ground provision, so it's always about, you know, that pumpkin going in something. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm all about it. Thank you. I appreciate that, sir. What's going on? Come on, man. Like, what you doing? Why are you playing around? You riding a bike throughout the city? Come on. Yeah, that pump, that pumpkin. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. We right passing by, man. Here we go, man. I'm with. I'm going to like. I'm getting ready to switch some stuff up. Like. Yeah, my man. Very good. Very good. My man. Okay. Very good. Okay. Everybody want to say they talk about the experience of the food. Did you like it? Oh, it's good. I will never you post a recipe. Last before the end of life? Um, Rock Kim will say, peace. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. You want some? Yeah. 